Okay, so let's um begin the whole thing and <laughs> I don't even know where to begin, but I'm a, okay, let me let me I'm gonna just showcase I don't know which one is easier, but I'm gonna put it down a grid over here, okay? Of which as usual it's just on the you know same XZ plane and you can reduce the size to whatever size you want, right? Or if you don't wanna do that you can actually drop the transform and use the transform as the manipulator uh for manipulating all the all the position uh data and actually if you want to you can use it even on um, i'm gonna just put this over here but i don't know how it's gonna come out but put a mountain right and for one actually you just need to displace uh let's see no that's not gonna work i'm gonna just leave that out so i'm gonna put a null over here I wanted to actually displace the text, the font kind of uh, in the Z X Z plane, but that's gonna need a warp swap, so I just <laughs> I just decided not to do that. Okay, so I'll just drop the null and we're gonna rename this null to cops, right? Now the reason for this is that we can actually double click on the great uh cop two network over here, and now we're actually in uh composite compositing um context. So now if you got if you don't have your tab set up so just go ahead and make sure you new, add a new tab type of uh, composite view but I already got mine set up over here so now oh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a geo geometry node over here and I'm gonna go ahead and look up for the two cops um, node over there and the viewpoint down axis is actually the y axis now that pretty much brings the node uh, what you call it the grid as it is as a more like a transparency or black to white thing as you can see over here now it's really freestyle you can actually freestyle this so pretty much you can actually drop in a color but have the image uh override the image size to whatever size you want so we can have it as 40 or something like that so i mean it's all up to you for real so um you know you just need something like this then you can actually get an original color and composite the black or whatever on it so uh, so this one is black it's an original whatever so you can just add this one is it that one to that one you, can, you, see, you see what I mean like pretty much you just need the spacing so it's the same thing as this one only this one just has everything pretty much done set up so I mean it all depends on what you really want to do but I'm gonna just go ahead and use this because I think uh, I find this a little bit easier and I can really I mean, manipulate the edges and stuff in warp top level and everything just translates down to the cops now I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a noise being that uh let, for one, let me just go ahead and drop in a null over here. A null. And we're going to name this uh, Back to Swaps, okay? And now you can actually just plug this in. And now anything I drop in between over here is just going to get streamed down to the bottom. So I'm going to drop in a blur. And you can tell what a blur is. I don't know most people use Photoshop. So I'm going to just put a, a like a 50 for the blur so pretty much you can consider that your gradient right so it depends on uh, what you want to do as far as for the gradient goes now the reason for the noise is so that you can have some variance in the in the texture that you're creating over here so now we can click on this noise over here and it's creating a RGB but you can actually check on the noise per component and just check that and check that so that creates a black and white image and pretty much all you need to do now is actually just multiply the original image the noise image with the uh, blurred image over here and now what you should get is um, you know some kind of uh, black and splotchy kind of stuff so that way you get displacement all over the place now honestly you will have to play with the settings like honestly you have to play with the settings because I would like to but I just really cannot have enough time to actually sit down and get the right settings and have the whole thing work out. So pretty much, I want to say I'm done with um, cops. Now, this is Houdini, so pretty much everything is uh, what you want to call it, uh, procedural. So I can drop in a transform over here. And now, this node over here, I'm going to go ahead and move it this way. And now I can actually just drop in an add like that I had over here and add this up. 
and now pretty much I got two noises now this one I can just move a little bit to this way or something like that now you can pretty much imagine you're gonna be animating this and noise and all that kind of stuff is gonna have to be like you know animating and stuff like that so it's all up to you now to actually get this whole thing running so for now I'm gonna just leave it as is so we, I'm gonna assume that everything is actually good of which it's just an assumption because I actually sit down and set up the animation correctly but you, it, I'd rather you do that than do the thing now we're gonna go back to VOPS over here I need to swap level and now we need to get that data out from this guy to this guy over here instead of using the mandrel pick we just need to use uh, this guy over here so I'm gonna go back to my scene view and I'm gonna go ahead and press Control shift T but if you don't want to do that you got your windows obviously um, right here oops I meant to click on this so you can just you know drop in a new text board or whatever you want to do so Control shift T that gives me my H script text part of which I'm a I'm lazy so I don't like typing stuff so and I don't like making too many errors especially because I know I don't type so good so channel is an uh, channel just gives us string channel name so now Houdini can actually give me the name of um, what you call it obj right x where you will go obj slash then I'm gonna just get motor start up here slash uh we call the create gradients right create gradients that's the this node right here the cop2 network so create gradients right slash and now we got this called back to sops which is what we want so now i'm lazy so i'm gonna just go ahead and copy this right copy <laughs> so i don't think he copied because um hold on let's see how they copied or not so i'm gonna come over here and i'm gonna just paste that right here but before I paste it I'm actually go ahead uh put a back tick so that's the little uh tick thing right by the number one or above the cap blocks key right so the cap then I'ma put up and a colon right then I'ma just go ahead and paste the expression as a well the tip path that I just got then you can put uh, the little tick at the very end and I'ma click and put a little back tick on it and pretty much that should be it now whether or not it's coming really really can't tell uh well i guess we can cause if you remember now i'm a houdini i just got this viewport open so i'm gonna go ahead click on this little drop down thing over here and i'm gonna split the paint top to bottom okay top to bottom so for one i'm actually just go ahead and change okay so i just click on that and just change this to a composite view okay now it's, uh, to go back up and you can tell that it's doing the thing cause if I can actually scale this down to the same proportion you can tell everything is actually lining up now don't have to believe me but uh, if I actually move this see they're overlapping now and now they actually just it's getting the data straight off out of ops number out of cops so everything is just animated so pretty much you can imagine the same for this would be the same for this one over here so I, if I drop a transform right here I can actually move that one too so of which that one just translates down so pretty much this one can be spaced out a little bit and you can imagine the possibilities with this so pretty much you can animate anything that you need uh, animated so pretty much you got the data flowing in as it is so straight up out of here down to here of which I'm sure there's a way of showing that like in Nuke but I don't wanna you know embarrass myself trying to figure it out <laughs> so okay we got that up and running so what do we need to do now well we need a copy shop for one so copy shop we gonna be copying boxes obviously and oh but these boxes are gonna be big off the top I know that for a fact cause you know the box drops big and you can check just see how um, you can see how big the box is compared to the whatever so we're gonna be dropping in a transform usually the reason for dropping a transform is that everything remains neat uh, in Houdini so to speak so that way you can just use 